All right, folks, today we're going to take a look at how to uh, grind and blend out some welds uh, over in the Tyler Metal Shop. This is just going to be like a, a little technique video to help you guys uh, figure out how to uh, get the finish nice and, and sort of knock down your welds, maybe blend them out. Uh, the first trick is to make sure that you have a good weld. So here's a MIG weld on this side, um, and then here is a TIG weld on that side. Notice that the TIG weld is uh, a lot flatter right not as high and uh, that the uh, mig weld here is uh, a little bit uh, higher profile a little bumpier so we got a little bit more material to knock down um, the uh, the trick is to try and lay down a, a good weld first notice there's no porosity on here no little air bubbles uh, you've also got um, no undercut undercut is the, the the edges of the weld to make sure that they don't actually um, fold into uh, or duck under the surface of the material here so you don't want to have any undercut make sure all those are filled in it'll come with time it'll come with practice um, so first get a good weld you can kind of faintly see this uh, if i get the video shining right you see that bright spot on either side of both of these welds this guy has a little bit of soot left on him but um, that bright spot a little bit here too is from me taking down the uh, mill scale before I welded. So that's another good way, especially with the TIG welding. You want to knock off any mill scale or any dirt or any gunk on your material and you'll always get a better weld when you do that. So I just used um, a knot wire brush for that. Um, but you can also use a light sanding pass, things like that. You just need to take it off in the area you're going to be welding. So once I have a good weld, and look there, MIG weld versus TIG weld, you know, you've got pretty decent penetration on both ones. And another um, question I often get is, Rob, if I put a weld in here, how do I grind that one out and grind it flush? Well, generally speaking, you just don't, because there's no way you're going to be able to get, um, uh, you know, a grinder in there easily. And you can try and hit it with a die grinder, um, but it's just going to look pretty chewed up. In our shop, we don't have good equipment to get into, into uh, inside corners. So you may just want to avoid welding in there or just lay in a really nice, neat, neat weld and you won't have to worry about um, grinding it out. You just leave it. You know, if, if this was um, out in the world somewhere and it didn't need to be super flush, uh, you just leave that TIG weld. Who cares? Same thing with the MIG weld. Um, all things equal though, we'll grind these out and see how we do. So first off, we've got it clamped in a vise here in the table. Uh, I've got my safety gear on and uh, I've set my uh, first uh, pass on the MIG weld anyway with uh, an angle grinder uh, and one of these quarter inch wheels. Now honestly, this thing is a new wheel and so you'd probably want to use one. I don't have one at the moment that's uh, used with me but you'd probably, if you're going to blend out a weld, start with one that's actually been uh, worn in a little bit and you'll be in better shape. General rule of thumb is you just want to do the aggressive work with this guy, but not actually grind anywhere on either surface until basically your finer grits. And the, the general rule of thumb is you sort of do a pass going across and then across again. And this way you're sort of cross hatching your grind marks. I'm not even going to hit this side with the a uh, hard wheel here, this um, aluminum oxide quarter inch hard wheel. So let's do a little grind here. Keep it moving, keep the angle low, and just knock down the high spot. This, this wheel is very aggressive, so you just want to be super careful with it. And that's, that's plenty, that's all I'm going to do there. So with a new wheel, it's really, um, really aggressive. And I already started to hit some of the walls that I didn't really want to do. So the next thing you're going to do if you're trying to make this, so you could do everything with this. It's just about knocking them down and not really for cosmetic reasons. You could just hit them with um, a normal hard grinding wheel. But a sanding disc is also a good option here. I've got two grits. I've got 80 grit and then I've got 120 grit. So for um, your first passes, um, I'm going to stick with the uh, the 80 grit. You could go to a 60 grit too, which is probably about as coarse, or I should say probably about as fine as you guys normally get in this shop. Um, just realize that these sanding pads, they wear out really quickly. So you want to do just light, light work with them um, and not try and do heavy material removal. And the same thing applies, sort of cross your grind marks and you won't get those crazy low spots.
so I'm using a little bit of pressure, but sort of quick passes. I'm trying to take out the grind mark that came from the previous grit. And I'll do a first pass on this pig weld. And you can even kind of blend things out. The trick is to keep your angle really low. And these corners can get a little tricky. But again, that might be that might be good enough for, for most people. If you were going to paint this, uh, you could easily use a little bit of body filler or heck, you might not even notice those little um, low spots if you were um, you know if you were going to paint it. So here I'll flip over to uh, a finer grit sandpaper and we'll see how that. Um, changes the finish. If these papers are really warped and wacky, you can kind of flatten them out before you put them on your on your gra uh, angle grinder. So make sure they're not too dog-eared one way or the other. You always want to use a complete disc. Make sure that they're not cracked or ripped or anything like that. So here we'll try some. This is uh, 120 grit. So now I'm just taking out some of those scratch marks, keeping my grinder moving. And so that's that's probably about as that's probably about as um, fine and finish as you're gonna get in the Tyler metal shop. And this gets pretty warm so be careful when you're handling them after grinding. Um, and that's not bad. If you're going to paint that, you probably want a little bit of tooth, a little bit of texture to it, uh, depending on the paint job. Uh, if you're going to do some kind of a patina on there, you might want to go a little further. If uh, you're interested in going a little further um, with your finish, you could go right to uh, an orbital sander. Um, we have one of these pneumatic orbital sanders. Um, I find a good intermediate step. and. Um, these aren't available for general use in the shop, like we don't provide, the, the Tyler shop doesn't provide them, but um, you can get, basically they're like industrial heavy duty scotch pipe pads that uh, are impregnated with a little grit. Of course, is the brown medium is the red and the blue is sort of super fine. It's more for kind of buffing on the steel, it won't really do much. And this will be a more dangerous thing to use too because they tend to, if they catch, they really uh, tear the grinder out of your hands. But um, So you could see about potentially uh, using one of these guys. Now this is really just going to take out, again, some of the scratch marks from the past previous um, from the I was using a 120 grit on the angle grinder, and you notice that this Velcro pad allows me to get pretty flat, but I'm still slightly angled. And then if you want to take out some of the scratch marks from uh, the coarse pad, you could switch over to a medium pad, this red one. And now that's giving you a real smooth finish. Again, if you were going to paint that, that's probably too smooth. Um, let's try working over to this orbital sander. And I've got some 220 and 120. And this is a great uh, non-directional finish. This is sort of a forgiving, any kind of non-directional uh, grind is always going to be A little more forgiving with your. Maybe I'll just do one corner. And you can get one of these pneumatic orbitals from the tool lockup. The sandpaper, however, tends to go pretty fast, especially on metalwork. So we don't supply the, the pads that are robust enough for metalwork. So you might want to see about, uh, talk to the tech and get some on order, um, or you can order them online. So that was a 120, and then you could even start getting into um, 220. 
um, and you just make things, you know, smoother and smoother as you go along. At some point, it's kind of diminishing returns, depending on what your end end goal is. But so that's that's your grind. Take off my safety gear here and give you a look at this. So. So you can see the, the luster there between the sanding disc uh, over here on the, on the right, and then the orbital gives you this non-directional, uh, it's more of a satin thing and it doesn't quite bounce the light around as much. And if you're gonna um, have something spray painted uh, or, or powder coated, you want a little bit of toothiness. These guys um, probably be fine, but, uh, or if you're gonna do any kind of a chemical patina, that would be nice. Um, or just a more forgiving non-directional finish. So that's that's grinding um, and blending out a weld. Um, and a little trick there um, to make sure you're not too, son, plug that guy, to make sure that you're not too overground, grabbing some tools here. Um, you always check your, your seam, right? And we've got just the nature of the angle iron itself, the way it was welded together. Um, but you can see that pretty, pretty uniform across that seam there. And so you want to make sure that before you ever even get to the grinding and blending phase that you have a good weld, that you lined up, you really took the time to make sure that this surface and this surface were lined up. That way I didn't have to remove a ton of material on one side or the other or get this funny big, you know, dip where my weld was um, and really, you know, keep the angle of the, of the angle grinder or any of the tool that you're blending out with um, low, but not so low that it's bouncing around on you. And, uh, and you use just a bit of pressure, but keep it moving uh, and you'll get good, uh, good results. All right, um, good luck with that. And um, again, in the, in the Tyler shop here, you're probably gonna find uh, a whole plethora of these quarter inch grinding wheels. Um, and you'll even find, uh, you know, some of these sanding pads, they wear out fairly quickly. So you know, while supplies last, or uh, it might be a, a resale or a purchase item. Um, but the main thing to know is that if you want things to look that smooth all the time, it's gonna cost you some money uh, in abrasives and time. Um, but it'll cost a lot less in abrasives if you take the time to lay in a good weld uh, first. Okay, good luck. And uh, always wear your safety gear, right? Face shield. Uh, the guard is on the angle grinder, handle on the angle grinder. Always make sure your parts are clamped in a, in a vise or down onto a, a good secure surface, uh, and you'll wind up with better results um, all around when you're safe. So 